Hey guys, Dust Letter Magic back with another announcement video, or I should say announcement related. It's not my announcement, but Wizards made a bunch of announcements today, so I'm covering them. Now, I don't usually like just plain announcing things, you know, just reading off what they've said uh, without, you know, some amazing conclusion or deep insight or additional information. Because I assume if you follow me on YouTube, you probably also follow on Facebook or Twitter, or even YouTube, Wizards of the Coast, so you get these announcements anyway. So I have, of course, added some deep, deep wisdom and insight. First up, the very first set after the Shadows of Innistrad block ends, which of course ends with Eldritch Moon, we've got Kaladesh. So that's the name of the first set and also the name of the block. It is going to be a 264 card set, which is exactly the number that I like. And it will be released on September 30th, 2016. The promotional tour for the set will take place in Honolulu, Hawaii, so uh, if you're planning on going, now don't. Too expensive for a plane trip. And wait until you see the hotel prices. Thanks for putting it on an island in the middle of nowhere, wizards. That really helps out. Oh, it's a good thing those platinum level pros got their $3,000 appearance fee back. Now they can afford the expensive plane trip. Oh, that's right. All of their travel expenses and hotels are covered in addition to the fee. I'm so glad that these players can go to Hawaii, uh, lose every single match, come in literally 3,000th place, and still get free money on top of it. Good job, everybody who nagged wizards to give them their money back. You know, instead of putting in the prize pool so the people who actually do well and deserve the money get it. Anyway, the next set after that, which will be the second and final set in the Kaladesh block, because of course they're moving to two block sets, is called Aether Revolt. Sounds pretty neat. Unfortunately, it has 184 cards in it, which is the magic number that screams, don't buy me, I suck. The 184 card quantity is almost exclusively the reason that Oath of the Gatewatch was a complete disaster price-wise. The expeditions didn't help because people overbought, so then they were stuck with a higher supply of rares and mythics than they would have naturally gotten, but still, 184 card sets are just disastrous in general, so I am probably going to buy about 5 cases of it and that's it, instead of like 20. Thanks, wizards, for giving out this information ahead of time. You're helping me out. By the way, this promotional tour for um, Aether Revolt is going to be in Dublin, Ireland. It's certainly not the cheapest place to travel to, but it's not the most expensive or weirder out there, so that's kind of cool, and definitely a lovely place to visit. But then again, who cares, because uh, at the very least, one of the tiers of uh, pro playership, or whatever the hell they call it, gets a free plane ticket and free hotel anyway, so who cares. They could hold it on the damn moon, and they're going to pay for the space shuttle. I mean, it just doesn't matter where they hold it. Aether Revolt will be coming out on January 20th, but unfortunately... The entire United States will have been ruined by whoever wins the election at that point. So unfortunately, it's pretty likely that World War III will have been started by either of the major candidates right now. So unfortunately, I assume Wizards will cancel or delay the set because, well, most of the United States will have been blown up by then. But see, I think that's why they put the Pro Tour in Dublin, Ireland, because that's where people could uh, run off to anyway. You know, they're, they're going to stay neutral, obviously. They should have really held it in Canada, actually. That's where most of the U.S. citizens are going to move to, no matter who wins the election. Hashtag, we're screwed 2016. So a little extra bonus information, if you didn't know, Kaladesh is, of course, Chandra's home planet. Uh, so I've heard it's a lovely place. Chandra talks about it all the time. It really does seem quite nice. So, you know, instead of all werewolves and enchanted trees and vampires and angels going crazy and dark magic and cults, oh my god, right after, oh my god, the entire plane is being eaten and destroyed and all the land of the manor are being sucked up and Eldrazi are running rampant. It's just like, oh, yeah, that looks like a nice place. I'd go vacationing there. But I looked up the weather forecast and it says some drama is coming to Kaladesh. So uh, <laughs> we'll see what happens. Who knows, maybe the Aether Revolt will be like some kind of weird civil rights thing, and, and all the all the Aetherlings will be wanting their own bathrooms or something. I don't know. But of course, I think I'll save the wild, unfounded guesses at the lore and the storyline for my videos that are specifically about that. Let me remind you that in my last video when I said that Jace is going to become a space astronaut, they're all going to jump on the uh, airship and travel to the moon. I wasn't that far off. It looks like the moon's traveling to them, and that's about as close as you can get while completely not being serious in any way. So I'm definitely looking forward to the awesome storyline of Kaladesh, and um, I like it already because the logo looks like a casino name. It just does. It just screams casino font. I'm not actually sure that there's not a casino called the Kaladesh. 
Wizards also added another cool announcement. Uh, they're adding another product. Starting with Kaladesh, each set, not just every block, but each set will have two Planeswalker decks, as they're called. They're each built around a different Planeswalker, which means, well, I would assume there's going to be a bare minimum of two Planeswalkers in every storyline, which might mean that there's a bare minimum of two Planeswalker cards in each set. But, you know, once in a while they'll feature a Planeswalker in the storyline and not make them an actual Planeswalker card just for balancing and card planning. The Planeswalker deck will be a pre-constructed 60-card deck and will be packaged with two booster packs to help you mod the deck. And it will have an MSRP of $14.99, which is absolutely fantastic. Considering boosters are worth about $3.50 to 4 bucks, that's a pretty darn good deal. They also claim that it would be released in Elven languages. Oh no, 11 languages. That's a shame, I would have preferred Elven. And then we've got a lot of Wizards confusing and misleading hypocrisy. They stated, and I quote, We didn't want this product to be something established players felt obligated to buy, but we also didn't want them dismissing it to the players who had it. They uh, also had more wording that explained it's for kind of like the intermediary players, you know, kind of they're new to magic, so they would buy this product. Now, as it turns out in a later portion of that exact same announcement, that's actually a complete lie, because they also stated that the other big difference about Planeswalker decks is that there's going to be five cards in each that won't be found in the expansion, but that will be considered connected to that block for standard legality, meaning Planeswalker decks will be playable in standard. They've done this in the past, so it probably sounds familiar to you guys, where, like, they'll print 274, but the booster packs actually only contain 254, and the other 20 cards are only available in some of the other products, but not any booster packs. Now, they got around people getting super pissed off about this in the past by making all 20 of them reprints. Like, for example, the card Nightmare in Origins. It wasn't in the Origins booster packs, but you could get it in uh, one of the pre-made decks. I don't quite remember which specific product, but it was one of them. Or you could just use the one from M15 and then have people barely take your word for it that it's legal in Origins. You know, because they didn't pull any out of their boosters, so they don't believe you, and then everybody whips out the smartphones and it turns into a mess. Well, here we go again, and they didn't say anything about them being uh, reprints. Now, that statement that says Planeswalker decks will be playable in Standard, uh, that does not appear to be true, actually. I mean, there's a lot of contradictions in this announcement. It's very confusing. First of all, they say that every single one will contain one single copy of a Mythic Rare Planeswalker. If that was true, that would mean that no matter what, the Planeswalkers in any given set will not exceed $15 because you could just go pick them up for $15 in the pack. So that actually strongly suggests that the Planeswalker included in the Planeswalker deck will not be legal and standard, making the whole deck not legal. In fact, they just said that only five of the cards will be playable and standard. But then there's a bunch of wording that says that the Planeswalker will be kind of purposely awful so that, quote, established players won't feel obligated to buy the Planeswalker decks. So it literally says, as a default, the Planeswalkers will be expensive to cast and splashy. So they're purposely printing a crappy Planeswalker that will probably accidentally end up in Modern or Standard with some kind of obscure combo. This is just unbelievable. Then they go on to say that it'll have two copies of a rare spell that has an effect and also tutors for the specific Planeswalker. This stuff is going to leak into Modern and Standard, trust me. They cannot nerf it to the point where it's unusable and still have people want the decks. This is definitely going to leak into those formats. That's why I'm kind of thinking that they're not being 100% correct in saying that they're standard legal cards, because there's a whole bunch of contradicting language here. It just doesn't make sense. The announcement really only gets weirder from there, but a quick summary of the lands is that you'll have four copies of an appropriate colored uh, common dual land. Now, both Planeswalker decks will be dual color, but there will only be two of them. So, there's going to be three to four colors, which means only two types of land. But then, they go on to say that they want a ten-card cycle of Enter the Battlefield Tap dual lands, you know, the old school, like, alpha-style ones, to remain legal at all times. Well, you aren't going to do that with two out of the ten, are you, wizards? Then they go on to say some even more cryptic nonsensical crap about what lands are going to be in them and they still don't specify if all of them will be standard legal they do suggest that they will be though and they keep kind of saying oh you wouldn't want to buy them just to rip them apart and play in standard but then they go on to say that that's exactly what you should do 
And of course, high-level players would not have any obligation to buy it for any reason, except they would because that's the only place you'll get these lands. This is probably my favorite announcements from, from Wizards that I've seen recently. It just shows how nothing they say ever makes sense, nothing they do ever make sense, and none of the products they make ever make sense. Oh, and then of course the very final part about that is, um, we might change everything, so don't take any of this as law. They claim they might just tweak it based on feedback from the customers, which they're going to get. If you want to read the entirety of this particular announcement, which, believe it or not, was written by Mark Rosewater, not Aaron Forsyth. The way it was worded, I was really surprised by that. Anyway, the link is in the description. It will confuse you, give you a headache, and just piss you off. So have fun with that, and uh, look forward to basically being required to buy this in addition to your booster packs. If anybody has any, like, I don't know, clarifying statements made by the staff after this came out, I'd love to see them. Because honestly, that, that second part makes no sense. No sense whatsoever. Uh, please leave it down in the comment section, and I'll see you guys next video.